Hey, healthy humans. I wanted to jump on really quickly and to talk about posture because our posture is so important to our quality of life. When we have good posture, we can move and walk pain, relatively pain-free. When we have poor posture, all kinds of imbalances. So you might have something in the foot. There might be an imbalance in the hips. There might be carrying something too much with one side. There might be too much on the phone. The head comes forward. But the whole body is affected, and not just the physical body. Aches, pains, arthritis, um, immobility, tingling, numbness, all of these things can be caused by poor posture, poor alignment of the bones of the body. And not only does it affect the physical body with lots of aches and pains, but and nerve issues and tightness and imbalances and jaw pain and headaches. I mean, there are so many um, health problems that come with poor posture, but we also have then the mental physical. So when our, our posture represents, it really reflects what's going on within the body because the body and the mind are not like two separate things. You couldn't say, well, my body's doing this and my mind is doing this sometimes, but we do, they do end up, they're, they're married in this way of interlacing and coming together and they overlap and they affect each other. So if you have misalignment in the physical body, that is going to penetrate into the mental emotional layer of, of who you are and that will affect the mental emotional and we start to feel like our posture. So <clears throat> sometimes, and sometimes it can be the other way around. The energy that we are carrying, the mental, emotional, and our energetic layers are going to affect the physical posture as well. So it's important that we pay attention not only to our physical posture in the plumb line, which we're talking about today, but we're also paying attention to the mental, emotional plumb line, which we'll talk about at another time. But today is about physical posture. So go ahead and just <clears throat> walk, 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 like you were walking in place and stop. And when you stop, I want you to look down at your feet. So we start at the bottom because this is the foundation. We stand on our feet, and if we have misalignment in our feet, there's going to be misalignment up above. Okay? So we're looking for things like, do the toes turn out? Do we have more weight on one side than on the other, one foot than on the other? And you can shift weight from side to side. Turn your toes to face forward. See how that feels. It gives a little more space right around the SI joint, so that's going to be better for um, SI. Shift your weight front and back, and you're just noticing, are you able to wiggle your toes? A lot of times, too, with posture, our feet become really stiff. We, um, the toes become so used to being in shoes that they just kind of clump together like one toe. So I want you to notice, do you have mobility in your toes? We want to keep the mobility in our toes. Some people supinate, which is rolling to the pinky toe edges of the feet. Some people pronate, which is rolling to the big toe edges of the feet. And ideally, we want something that is right in the middle. So big toe, pinky toe. If you don't know what is going on with your feet, you could always go to even like a running store. Like we have Charm City Run here. Um, go to a running store and ask them to check your feet. And they will recommend, they'll tell you if you supinate or pronate. And they'll recommend specific shoes for your foot type. And that's really important. Getting good shoes, good supportive shoes for your foot type is gonna be key as we maintain mobility and a pain-free a pain free life for as long as we possibly can. Okay, then we'll look at things like the knees. How do your knees work? Do you lock out your knees? So a lot of people, and there might be one knee, but we if we shift weight onto one side, you can see where this knee is locked out because you can't even see my kneecap. Do you see that, how it kind of goes flat? That means that this knee is locking out. And if I do that repeatedly over time, over my lifetime, that will turn to arthritis and that could mean knee replacement and that could mean a whole bunch of things that we don't wanna have to deal with, right? So so just paying attention to, oh, if my knees are locked out, giving a little baby bend, just making sure that the knees stay mobile. We don't want bone on top of bone. So you just kind of make it work, okay? Then we're also noticing things like the low back. So naturally, I have an anterior tilt. That's what this would look like. I think it came from many years of not wanting my inner thighs to touch each other. Crazy, right? I mean, we kind of go, all those things that we don't realize, we make a small little micro adjustment. 
oh, my butt sticks out. It looks a little lot better. And then my thighs don't rub against each other. And then, you know, it's kind of like um, that posture. Plus, I have three kids and I carried them, you know. They're, <laughs> so the, the, it's the pregnant posture, too. You know, when our bellies come out, this is what happens. But this, this that tiny little thing right there is going to create tight hip flexors. It's going to um, put too much sprain strain on the lumbar spine and we want to be some people might have this type of posture now this is called a posterior tilt to the pelvis the bowl of the pelvis tips backwards and this can give people really tight right tight around the si joint to sciatic pain i see that commonly going together with a foot that's turned outward and um, people that have symptoms of sciatica okay so we're looking there and then as we make our way up we're just kind of playing around. So a lot of the posture is right here right now I, that I commonly see quite a bit. And this is with older and young people. So it, there's no age here. The young people are getting, you know, the phones and technology when we're looking down like this, or we're sleeping with too many pillows behind our head, you're leaning back, you know, you've got the pillows and your chin goes into your chest. This is not going to be good long term because what happens is our head starts to move forward and we don't realize it. No one knows that their head is forward. We can't see it in ourselves because when we're looking in the mirror, you're looking this way, right? So we don't know that our head is forward unless someone takes a picture of you from a profile and then you go from here, which would be ideal alignment with my ears up over my shoulders to here, to here, to here. Now for each inch that we go forward, our head weighs about 12 to 14 pounds, just the way it is resting on the cervical spine, which are tiny little bones, okay? So our head, if it's in the right placement, 12 to 14 pounds-ish or so. But as our head starts to go forward, it's more weight of misalignment here. And it can go up to like 40 pounds, um, almost about, a, um, a 10 pound difference when you go from three inches forward to four inches forward. And it really is, and we, we just don't notice it. So we start off here and then all of a sudden we start to round even here and our head goes forward more. And we round here and our head goes forward more. And because our head's coming forward, but we don't really know it, then we feel like we're looking down at the ground a lot. So then we lift the chin. So basically what we're doing is too much cervical flexion all of the time. Now, with the chin, with this motion, there was were um, there were a bunch of studies. They were finding that women were going to the hairdressers because and this was in a, a yoga book, but because we work with how much cervical flexion is healthy and safe, there were people that were having symptoms of stroke. It was like dead leg. They were getting symptoms of this dead leg, stroke, um, numbing down one side, almost a paralysis down one side, not able to move. And what they found was there were women that were going to the hairdressers and they were do, and you know, you put your head back into the bowl and the bowl cuts you right here and your head's tipping too far back. So women were starting to get this from this position as were yogis, who were in this position. So too far back here and too far forward here was giving people this, these symptoms of a, similar to a stroke. Um, so we wanna be really careful about what's going on with our neck. In, as a yoga teacher, this is what I tell all of my teacher trainees is, you think of the neck as the mothership of of what you're really paying attention to. Like the, it's the, because so much injury happens in the neck and that's because the neck is extremely mobile. So we hear a sound and we're able to turn and look at it. But because the neck is so mobile, we can hurt it really badly. As an Ashtangi, and when I first started practicing yoga, it was head forward and head back, head forward and head back. So then 10 years later, when I had my first x-rays done of my neck, because I had these symptoms, I was getting these chronic headaches and I didn't know what was going on. I was having this fatigue, this tingling and headaches. And um, when I had x-rays done, they were like, oh, you've been in an accident. And I said, no, I haven't been in, in an accident. I, 
um, but but my neck looked like it had been. So my neck looked whiplash. And then what happens is that we start to, the bones start to grow together because they're, the bones want to create stability because the spinal column runs through the vertebra. So the connection between our brain and the whole rest of your body from your fingertips to your toes goes through the spine. So we need the spine to be flexible, strong, mobile, able to move in as many directions as possible. So the motions that we want are flexion, extension, and rotation. And we want those to be able to happen in the spine. But if our posture is bad, the, the, the spine is going to start to fuse together and we end up with all kinds of pain and all kinds of problems. So we're starting at the feet. We go up to the knees. We go up to the hips. You're checking your pelvis out. And then we won't get into too much today shifts, but I definitely have a shift in my ribs. Yo yoga has made me so aware of that. And so I've corrected it quite a bit, but it's something that I'm constantly aware of. Which way are my hips going? Which, How much weight do I have in one foot? And then I always loosen up the shoulders. If you're like me, you might carry tension in your neck and shoulders. This is where I get it. My jaw gets really tense. So we wanna loosen things up a bit and then notice where your head is and you might ask someone now don't try to stand in great alignment when you're asking someone can you please look at me and tell me if my head comes forward and do my shoulders round forward because when i'm standing here if i'm just standing here in space i might not realize it but what we want to be is here so we take the shoulders slightly back doesn't have to be a lot but slightly back you'll feel the length uh, opening of the pecs the check mark uh, chest muscles with our ears up over our shoulders and visualize reaching the crown of your head up toward the sky. If your head comes forward, we want to push back. Head forward, push back. Head forward, push back. And I do do this with myself and I do do this with my mom too. So when I was younger, I had a really large chest. I hit puberty early and I developed early. So I was hunching over from pretty much 10 to 15, you know, like hunched over like this. And my mom would say, sit up straight, sit up straight, sit up straight. She was a very, very, very on me about my posture. And now it is the other way around because my mom is in her 70s. And I, um, <laughs> and so she has gotten really kyphotic. And so I'm like, posture, 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 up straight. And it does take a constant reminder. She goes, it's so much work. And I said, it is. It takes a lot of awareness and thought and consciousness but practice makes permanent. Practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect. No one wants to be perfect, right? We've all kind of hopefully, most of us have thrown away the perfect towel. We go, I have given up on trying to be perfect. I'm done with that stage of my life and I no longer strive for that. Practice makes permanent. What we do on a consistent basis is what we will be. So we bring the chin back, we take the shoulders back, we check in with our Feet, how much weight we've got and we're just noticing it all the time and it might feel weird when you're sitting down and you go wow I am so upright but when we sit down start sitting at the edge of the chair don't sit all the way back and when you're on the couch do the same thing and sit up straight and it doesn't matter if you're watching TV if you're reading the paper bring it up here if you are people read papers but bring it up here if you are um, on the computer, make sure always, of course, that your monitor is eye level so that you don't have to be here because this will not be good. And if you do work on a computer for long periods of time, get up every 45 minutes, take a walk around. The, what we really want to um, focus on if, for the people in the desk is take the leg back. We want hip extension. This is going to be really good because Otherwise, everything closes off right here, and that's going to cause a whole lot of problems. So <clears throat> up straight, shoulders back, get some mobility, move the spine, flexion and extension. Every day, oh, this is lateral flexion, do a little lateral flexion and rotation as well every day. Okay, and then we are, I hope you feel good. So I really want, these are ways that we are re being responsible for ourselves, taking care of our bodies, taking care of our minds, taking care of our energy, taking care of um, our relationships and taking care of our environment so that we can live good, full lives. That's all it's about is a long, healthy, happy life. I love and light, and I will see you next time.